What's up guys, it's Roger here from Clan Reef, and welcome to part two of my photography tutorial. I'm only going to do two parts, and this one will probably be a little bit simpler, but I didn't want to make it one long 12 minute video. So, I'm going to break it down into two parts. So, this part is going to be solely taking pictures. And I'm going to do my best, since I am controlling my camera with my phone, I'm going to do my best to kind of show you um, the settings on my camera. Or, just kind of go through the settings on my phone so I can kind of, or I'll put them up in the video or something. I'll do my best to show you guys. So, the first thing you're going to do is make sure, like I said in the last video, make sure your camera's nice and parallel, your glass is clean, pumps are all turned off, and you're ready to go. Um, now it's time to adjust your settings in your camera. And I think a really good baseline is, um, oh, I, ch I changed it, is these settings right here. I don't know if you guys can see that. Oops, sorry. I'm trying to get to focus. Um, but it's an aperture value of f20, a shutter speed of one second, and an ISO of 100. I also have my white balance at 10,000 Kelvin. Um, if you guys don't have a Kelvin setting, sorry for the clock. If you guys don't have a Kelvin setting, just set it to auto. They're usually pretty good. Wait for this. Okay. There we go. <laughs> sorry about the clock, guys. Um, the auto setting's pretty good. So we're going to see, I'm going to take a picture. I'm going to put the raw pictures up in the video so you guys can see what I'm doing. Um, so we're going to go ahead and take a picture at those settings, and we're going to see what we get. So this is the image that comes up, and I think that's a pretty good image. Um, it's really nice and clear. You can blow it up. I'll blow it up for you guys and see the kind of the detail we're getting. We're getting a little bit of dust in the background, but that's okay and it, you guys can see how much of the coral is in focus and that's due to the aperture so since I'm shooting at such a high aperture of f20 I'm getting more branches in focus so now I'll give you guys an example of what happens when you drop that aperture value back down so now I'm gonna drop it down to f7.1 but if I do that and I just leave the, the shutter speed at one second I, I'll get a really bright image like this that comes up hopefully I don't know why it's not coming up well, you'll get a nice bright image like this. Um, I'm not sure where it is though. It's not showing up on my phone, so I'm, I'm, I'm trying. Oh, there it is. So it showed up on my phone. So it's nice and it's too bright. So to compensate from that, we're going to lower our, our shutter speed value. So it's letting it's manually letting in less light. So let's go ahead and cut that in half. Let's try one. Let's try a quarter of a second. I feel like that'd be a good adjustment here. So a little bit faster shutter speed, and let's see how that one turned out. A little bit still too fast, I think. Um, so we're going to make it a little bit faster. We're going to go one-sixth of a second, and then we're going to try again. So uh, and you can see in this image, compared to the last one, the images in the background aren't as in focus. And sometimes that's a style effect. Sometimes you don't want the branches in the back to be in focus. I like kind of the depth it gives you with some things in the background being out of focus but sometimes you just want them to all be in focus so now I'm gonna kind of move the camera I'm gonna get a couple more shots I'm sure you guys are sick of seeing the same shot over and over and over again so I'm gonna kind of maybe get a picture of this tricolor Valida for you guys and kind of give you another rundown of the opposite way so to make sure everything's nice and in focus uh, and I, I always found the best success when you, you're, you're auto-focusing on whatever branch is closest. Instead of focusing in the middle, focus on whatever's closest because everything behind that is going to be your depth of field. So now let's get a picture. But let's, let's, I'm going to show you a picture if you have not enough light coming in. So say your aperture value is f20, but your shutter speed is only, we're going to leave it at that one-sixth of a second. I'll show you what happens when it's underexposed. So as you can see, this picture, this raw picture that I just took, is way too dark. Um, you can't barely see anything. And that's what happens is when you have, you're letting in so little light through that aperture and you don't have enough time to let that light you know, accurately display so all over the sensor, you won't get as good enough of an image. So that's what happens when your aperture is too high and your shutter speed is too slow. So now to compensate for that, we're going to put slower aperture value back down to one one second. Like I said, one second f20 ISO 100 is a really good starting point. Um, I think it gives a really nice depth of field. It gives you a, a really nice exposure. 
and it, it just does everything well. Um, like I said, if you wanted to, if you wanted to, you could probably go up to. Let's try F. I'm gonna try F32 because this lens can go up to F32. But if I do that, I'm also gonna have to adjust my shutter speed to make it a little bit slower. So I'm gonna double it to two seconds and we're gonna see what this image looks like. And this is just gonna add a really large depth of field. And I'll put that image up there for you. Um, it's not too big of a difference, I can't really tell. Um, maybe a couple in it inches more, but that just kinda shows you um, that you can really have a, a large depth of field while still, um, you know, getting proper exposure. So it just takes a little bit of patience. Alrighty guys, that's the end of the video. Kind of got cut off there at the end. But I kind of listed all of the tips that I went over in these last two videos here on the screen for you. Um, if you have any comments, questions, concerns, go ahead and leave them down in the comment section below. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, just like last time, I'm going to link some informational links about how everything works with the camera down below. So, that being said, thanks for watching, guys. Head over to my Facebook page if you haven't already. Um, I post there very frequently. And follow me on Nana Reef. All those links will be in the description. So thanks for watching, guys. Enjoy your tanks, and I'll see you guys later.